oftentimes students want to know when should I use the equations for radiance and when should I use the equations for irradiance? And the answer is surprisingly simple. Um, if we have two different situations here, we have a situation where the observer is relatively close to an object that is emitting radiation and the uh, solid angle associated with that uh, is uh, non-negligible. Uh, in that situation, uh, the 1 over sine of the solid angle is less than infinity, uh, then the surface is diffuse uh, and you should use radiance in your calculations. Um, so basically you're looking at this and as you change your angle, the amount of radiation from that uh, object is going to change and you need to essentially uh, use, uh, calculate the amount of radiation that's received from each one of these points using the radiance equations. On the other hand, if the observer is very far away from the emitting object, the solid angle becomes very, very small. Um, and as the uh, solid angle approaches zero, then all of the rays coming from that object are essentially parallel to one another. Uh, another way to mathematically say that would be that uh, as one over the sine of the uh, solid angle uh, goes to infinity, in that case, you can treat this as a parallel beam radiation, and you can use, uh, you can complete all of your calculations using the irradiance. So, what I like to think of is that these are the two extremes. You're close to the object, you have to use diffuse, you're very far from the object, uh, you have to use a parallel beam assumption, uh, and you can use irradiance. Uh, but there's no single threshold that says at this distance you have to do one or the other. Uh, clearly, if you use the diffuse radiation uh, when you're far uh, from the object, you'll get the same answer. If you use uh, the parallel beam assumption when you're close, you'll get an incorrect answer. So one of the things that we want to focus in on is uh, this situation is most appropriate um, for uh, satellites that are orbiting our planet and looking down at the Earth's surface. They're very close to the Earth, and the Earth subtends a very large surface angle, uh, a solid angle, and you generally have to do your calculations in terms of the radiance. On the other hand, if you're doing radiative equilibrium calculations for our planet, and the emitter is the Sun, then you can get away with simplifying it and doing your calculations in terms of radiance. 